feel like I had arm shots rather than a turn. Welcome to the Investment Properties for Sales show, folks. Thing is selling at or above list. We are going to provide you guys with complete transparency and education. We take you to the video tour. Won't watch TV, giving it to you straight. Welcome to the number one resource for investing in the Cleveland real estate market, folks. It don't get any more detailed, more uh, efficient, more specific to the needs of the real estate investor in the Cleveland market than here at Holton Wise and here on Holton Wise TV, right? We specifically streamline the process for investors both local and out of state. And today's show, today's show is all about this deal right here. 4975 East 110th Street in Garfield Heights. 44125 priced at 104900 And this thing has the potential to bring in $1,590 a month in rent now as you see from the footage we already got tenants in there and these tenants right you can see from their units they're just in the midst of living there right this is what this type of investment looks like and that's what we are dedicated to doing for you guys our viewers right you get a lot of the traditional turnkey providers and the the resellers of investment real estate, then you get those regular realtors that, uh, you know, they just dip their toe in the investment space, right? We don't, we ain't trying to be like that here, folks. We're trying to give you the real, the real insight, the real look, right? What we didn't do is go up to these tenants and be like, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Tenant, we are filming a video next week. We need you to do this, this, and this to your unit. No, no, no. I want my buyers, I want my investors to see what it really looks like to be a real estate investor in this market with this type of asset on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the story with this property, it's a banging friggin' duplex. Uh, all the big ticket items are taken care of, right? Cruising into the basement, you'll see, right? Furnaces and hot water tanks, very new, right? Basically, everything has been replaced within the last five years. The roof, a little bit over 10 years, right? Is our goal to make sure you know what you're getting, right? So a roof that's a little over 10 years, roofs like this, folks, they have about a 30-year life expectancy, and this is probably about an $8,000 roof, right? So you should have you know, at least 15 years of life expectancy left in this roof, right? Like, I, I ask sellers all the time when I'm doing my business and, you know, I'm going to buy properties, you know, as an investor and things like that. But like, yo, Mr. and Mr. Seller, how old's your roof? And their response to me is, it's good. All right, bro, that's not what I asked. I asked you how old it is. Well, it's good. It's good. Don't tell me nothing, right? If it's a 30-year roof and it don't leak till year 30, but it's 27 years old, I guess you could say it's good. But guess what? If it's three years old, you could say it's good as well. A three-year-old good roof and a 27-year-old good roof are two very different things that we as real estate investors need to factor in, right? We got to divide the cost of the roof in totality into monthly capital expenditure budget, right? Our capital expenditure budget, right? We have to itemize that thing out, right? So we know what our true returns are. And by the way, folks, if you don't know how to calculate that kind of stuff, you want to be here on Holton Wise TV because in my other show, the MLS Search and Analysis Show, I've produced over 1,500 episodes with every single one of them showing you how to calculate a capital expenditure budget. So check out that other show if you're ready to learn more about the ins and outs of calculating your returns on these types of investments. Now, with this one, the current rent, these are legacy tenants, right? 533 and six and a quarter. That's 1158. It's nothing too sexy, nothing to sneeze out. But what we really have here is two market rate uh, units that could be bringing in almost 1600 a month, right? We should really be getting 795. When we took this one over, had legacy tenants in there, chose to not increase their rents, didn't want to generate additional turnovers, but we absolutely could. 
uh, move their rents up when the leases expire. Although I would never recommend taking a legacy tenant, somebody at 533 and going right to 795. If you want to do that, by law you can, but I find jumps that large in that quick uh, typically generate uh, an unnecessary turnover. And folks, if you're going to be investing in multifamily real estate in this market, you're going to get turnover, all right? That's going to be part of the business. If you watch my other show, I show you how to calculate and predict for that as well. But that's under normal operating circumstances. That does not involve you going in and being crazy and creating artificial turnover because artificial turnover is what kills our returns. That said, it's a balancing act. Do I want them to continue to be there at 533 Versus 795, no. But I don't want to go to the extreme and go, hey, 795, you got to move out. Because then that's probably going to create that artificial turnover. You're probably going to have to spend several thousand dollars redoing the unit, lost rent. That doesn't work out for the, the balance sheet. So what you want to do is you kind of want to meet them in the middle. Still give them a large raise, right? Hey, man, you can't live here for 533. There ain't nowhere else you're going to live that's comparable to this for 533. But we're not going to try to force you out, try to kick you out the back door. So you want to give them something that's a little below market to incentivize them to stay and incentivize them not to increase your turnover, right? So I would do something small. Like on the next one, I'd probably up the 533 tenant to about 675. And I'd probably take the, uh, the 625 one to about 700. And then, you know, the following year, we get them up to market rate, right? Doing all that, folks, this thing is going to be an earner, right? So I feel like I've given you the most transparent information possible. I think you have everything you need to know uh, to decide if this investment makes sense for you. So if you would like to purchase this investment property, all you need to do is send my team an email, sales at holtonwise.com. Include your pre-approval letter if you are paying with a loan. Include your proof of funds if you want to pay cash, and then we will be able to field your offer. If you are one of those buyers who's like, man, I like what you're doing here. This all seems good, but I don't know exactly how you guys operate. How does the Cleveland market work? What should I do? Don't worry. We can walk you through that process, too. Under the show notes, book a free call with my team, and we'll get you up to speed on what you need to know. And I just realized one more thing. Before I jet, I want you guys to know I should have my guys putting this on the screen right now. This is the point of sale report. Uh, this particular city, they have what's called a point of sale process. Uh, more on that will be in the show notes below what the point of sale process is in various uh, municipalities across the Cleveland market. But it's just a couple ticky-tack things that the city wants you to take care of when you buy it, right? Either the seller could do it before they sell, the seller's opted not to do it, just going to have you guys do it, right? So that means Holton Wise will do this on your behalf. We're looking at uh, nothing here, right? Like a grand-ish, right? No major stuff. Just a little ticky-tack stuff that we'll be able to handle for you. Keep the city happy. All right, folks, that's all I've got. Again, if you want to make an offer, send that with the proof of funds or pre-approval to sales at HoltonWise.com. And let's get you guys investing in one of the best cash flow markets across the USA. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.